Hey, what's up everyone, AU5 here. Today I'm going to teach you how to make punchy kicks and snares from Synthesis, using only Ableton stock plugins. Before we begin, we must understand the basic components that make up a drum hit. The transient, the body, and the tail. The transient is a very short click, only several milliseconds, which gives the drum a sharp attack. The body comes immediately after the transient. It is usually a 20 to 200 millisecond tone that is responsible for the punch and fullness of the sound. The tail comes after the body and is often perceived as an extension of the body. This could be a reverb tail for a snare or a sine wave sub for something like an 808 kick. Let's synthesize a snare. Start by loading an operator onto a MIDI track. We're going to route our operators in parallel so they don't affect each other. So now we have four independent oscillators. We will create the body of the snare first because it is perceptively easier to build off of and sculpt the sound into shape. Alright, let's use fixed frequency mode for uh, simplicity's sake. Let's tune it to 200. So no matter what note I hit, it's going to be 200. Let's set our initial all the way up and our sustain all the way down. And then let's do a... 50 millisecond attack, 100 millisecond decay. All right, let's turn on the pitch envelope and turn that all the way up. Decrease the decay so we get like a nice sweep. Let's do 50 milliseconds. Let's turn this up. All right, so let's make the transient now. What we're going to want to do is set our oscillator to noise looped. We could use noise white but noise white is truly random. If we use noise looped, it will be the same attack each time. Let's turn up the level on this, and let's make the envelope that same thing, initial to zero, sustain all the way down. Let's make the attack 10 milliseconds and make the decay very short. Let's put it on fixed mode and let's do to 200 hertz. So by using the phase, we can change the start position of the noise looped and get a different sounding click. But we can uh, tweak that later. The third part we want to do is uh, create the tail. This is where we would want to use noise white. Otherwise, it would be tonal noise and it might sound weird. Could work, but it might sound weird. We want the transient and the body to hit and then have the tail fade in. So let's make the attack, I don't know, 100 milliseconds maybe. Let's turn the sustain down. Adjust our levels. All right, starting to come into shape. Let's shorten our transient a little bit more. a little bit louder. So now what we want to do is kind of glue it all together. Um, so we're going to go to the filter section and we're going to choose one of these other filters other than clean. We're going to use PRD and that gives us the ability to add drive to it, essentially overdrive. So I'm going to increase this and the volume is going to get louder so I'm going to have to decrease the volume as I increase this. Let's crank it all the way up. Already you can hear the higher harmonics uh, starting to ring out. It's what we want, but not that intense. There we go, that's starting to sound pretty good. You can just keep the resonance down. So at this point, this is where we want to start doing uh, processing. Like the basic sound is there, but it sounds kind of dull. So let's do... Let's do an EQ and shape some of the noise up here. At this point, it's really just trial and error, uh, sculpting the sound. Every time I create a snare, it sounds different. Let's 
to use a glue compressor. And the cool thing about glue compressor is we can use the soft clip mode, and what that does is it basically is a limiter um, with a zero attack and release. And that essentially just flat tops the, the wave so we don't get any, uh, we don't get any peaking. So as I reduce the threshold, you can hear that the transient starts to get much snappier and everything starts to get even more glued together. So I'm going to increase the makeup gain to make up for the lost gain reduction. Sounding pretty good. At this point, let's draw a MIDI note and render it out to audio. So I'm going to freeze the track, let me create a new audio track. We have this in audio now, and the cool thing about audio is we have the ability to do some interesting things. We can splice it and crossfade it. So for instance, um, right around here, let's see what it sounds like if we just delete this and shorten this. You get a more, you get a less of a sweepy sound and more of like a, almost like a more natural sound. Um, I can crossfade these together. I can change the start position of this. So at this point, what we could do is we can start adding some automation. Um, let's throw some reverb onto this. Let's filter out the low end. Actually, hold up. Let's automate the wet dry so we have a wide tail, but we have a dry body and transient. Uh, like a nice gated snare sound. Let's throw an EQ on that so we can filter out the lows. What we want to do is create a group and throw the EQ on here. And create a chain here. And then we can make this full wet and then automate the level of the reverbed chain. We can, well, we can essentially freeze this whole track, create a new track, and drag this entire thing down into a new audio track, consolidate it. Let's do some more EQing. We can use multiband dynamics to further shape the tail of the sound. So. We have our high, mid, and low range. If we set the low range to above the, the body, now we have independent control over each frequency band. So let's say I want to have the mid range of the tail to ring out longer. What we could do is use um, upward compression to push the mid-range noise out longer. And we can do the opposite. We can do upward expansion to make the very top end of the tail shorter. We can also adjust our crossovers to get even more precise. Let's turn off Softney and RMS. Let's freeze that. Create a new track, bring it back down. We can put a fade on this. 
So, at this point, if we like how our snare sounds, but we want to change the pitch of it, one way we could do that is by using transpose. But the issue with that is the snare gets shorter or longer depending on which way we transpose it, and it kind of loses its timbre. So because we're using a drum instead of a tonal harmonic instrument, we can use a frequency shifter to effectively transpose the drum while preserving its timbre. So we'll use the fine knob to, uh, to tweak our snare sample. Let me put this on loop. Nice. We can continue to shape this sound by adding more layers to it. I'm going to load up an 808 clap. If we hear how this layers, it's not very impressive. It sounds almost like the 808 takes away from the punch of the snare. So what we could do is create a fade to give the snare some more room for the transient to cut through. And allow this to ring out more. We add some reverb to it. Let's do full wet. Mm, now we have a really lush tail. Let's throw some chorus on this. It's like the size lower, make the decay time a little bit longer. Let's throw an EQ on it. I'm very satisfied with this snare. So let's create a new audio track and resample this. Excellent. It's important to note that there shouldn't be any gaps or any significantly low points of amplitude in the drum hit. Right here, there is a little bit of a dip but what we can do is we can boost just that section. We can boost it up and then crossfade it with the rest. Let's see how that sounds. I'm going to turn my master down so we're not clipping. That versus this. almost the same. It just has a little bit more warmth to it, and then we can consolidate that. All right, there's a new snare drum. At this point, we can create a MIDI track, throw a drum rack on there, put it right in the cell. And we can do even further filtering. Let's use high pass. Let's tune it to our fundamental. Give it a little bit of resonance. Let's set it to a less steep slope. Let's use PRD so we can add some drive back into it. Now let's try something. Let's go into our filter envelope. And what we're going to do is we're going to essentially make the frequency sweep up so we filter out all of the lows from the tail, but preserving the lows in the transient in the body. So something that would sound like this. So turn this on. What we're going to want to do is oop, turn this the other way. Slowly turn up the frequency. Turn down the res a little bit. You can 
really sculpt the sound. Let's try a different uh, filter mode. It'll pretty much sound the same to me. We could throw a pitch envelope on it. Tweak the pitch a little bit with a really short decay. It just adjusts the transient. Get some interesting punchy effects that way. So let's make a kick drum. I'm going to create a new MIDI track. Let's use operator yet again. Similar thing applies. Let's use fixed. Let's set it to 60 hertz. Turn our initial up and our sustain down. And let's make the attack 100. Let's make the decay 100. Let's turn our pitch envelope on. Let's turn on the filtered drive ahead of time. Now, if we go into our pitch envelope section, it doesn't really sound that impressive. Let's turn the initial all the way up and then bring the attack a little bit more forward. This is going to give us a transient. But the cool thing is we can adjust the envelope curves with these blue nodes. Let's bring the frequency even lower. Let's do 40 hertz. Let's make it a little bit longer. Let's make the attack 150. Ooh. Let's use noise looped for the transient. Do 300 hertz for that. Let's really bring it up. I want more of a, a sweep. Right now it's very subby. So I'm gonna bring the attack out a little bit more. Nice. We can use our peak transposition to really fine tune where the punch of the kick hits. Sounds good around there. We can also use this time knob to globally change all of the envelope times for both our transient and our body. Same applies for the snare. You can adjust the transient, the body, and the tail simultaneously using this knob. It's good for fine tuning once you already have the gist of the sound made. That sounds good to me. Let's throw an EQ on this. Get it a bit clickier. Cut out some of the low mids. And add just a little boost on the low end. Right around 100 hertz sounds good. I'm peaking right now, so let's do our glue compressor trick. Let's turn on the soft clip. Ooh, already that gives us some nice harmonics. Let's turn a threshold down, turn up the makeup. Not too much changes, but we get a nice transient now. Let's try transposing this. We could also use a frequency shifter to transpose, just like we did our snare. All right, let's render this out. Let's use the MIDI from the snare. Wait, freeze it. You try it. Let's it. Very simple kick drum. Let's see what it sounds like if we use a, our transient from our snare spliced with the body of our kick drum. Let's do some crossfading. Let's boost it up a little bit more. Let's put a glue compressor on here just for limiting. I'm 
Let's fade this a bit more. All right, now we can consolidate it and throw it in our drum rack. We can go into here, use the pitch envelope and tweak our attack a little bit more if, we will, if we'd like to. We can add some more drive to it. And let's make a beat. And then just tweak as necessary. We could even do some cool stuff with layering within the drum rack. We can load up some metallic foley. And then with some tweaking with that, create those nice ringy snares. Let's throw some reverb on that. We can use some overdrive, throw it on the entire snare for even more crunch and brightness. It's a bit much. Use a frequency shifter to tune it even more. I'm totally getting carried away right now, but as you can see, the possibilities are endless. As long as you know what you're doing when you're layering and how to process correctly, you should be good. I have to mention that it's important to understand that the perception of transients can vary drastically depending on what you're monitoring through. The isolation of headphones can make transients sound much louder or quieter than they really are. Also, it's important to listen to drums in context of other instruments in a mix to determine how they truly sound. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any ideas or suggestions. As always, stay creative, stay inspired. Thanks for watching.